Are feelings of disgust destroying your relationship? My girlfriend's past disgusts me is one of the subject lines I see most often in my email inbox. If disgust is plaguing your relationship, you are not alone. The strategies in the following video come from years of supporting people to heal from obsessive negative thoughts about their partner's past, not to mention my own personal healing. The good news is it's usually possible to repair a relationship that's been damaged by feelings of disgust and judgment. So let's explore how. First off, disgust is a tough one. It's right up there with shame and humiliation for the title of human emotions we'd rather not discuss. Most of the time, we don't want to acknowledge these emotions within ourselves. Still, my girlfriend's past disgusts me is a frequent theme in my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and online course. When we're talking about disgust in relationships, it almost always comes back to sex. There's an evolutionary reason for this. Disgust is one of the basic emotions all human beings are born with to help us survive. Its function is to keep us healthy. It's easiest to think about disgust using food analogies. Our feelings of disgust are what keeps us from eating the rotten meat that would otherwise make us sick. We are also programmed to experience disgust whenever there is a threat of infectious disease. It's why we feel grossed out by other people's bodily fluids and would much rather perform CPR on a loved one rather than a stranger. Sexual disgust is one of six strains of disgust which scientists have identified. Sexual disgust can manifest when we learn about a partner's history of casual sex. There are two reasons a partner's history of casual sex is a common trigger for disgust. The first comes back to what disgust is engineered to do, keep us safe. Learning that our partner has a history of casual sex can send a red flag to our brain that we are at an increased risk for infectious disease or infidelity. Our bodies may trigger a disgust response to try and keep us safe. This can be blamed on primal evolutionary programming, which hasn't adapted to the times we're living in. In the same way that it can be challenging to turn off instinctual flight or fight responses to a totally safe situation, it can also be difficult to turn off disgust, even when it isn't warranted. Your disgust doesn't know about condoms or STI screenings. It really can't help it. Now, before you go show your girlfriend this article and blame everything on her cooties, remember that this is only half of the disgust equation. The other, far more powerful trigger for sexual disgust is morality. Morality is learned, and disgust can be a powerful teacher. Scientists believe that disgust is used as a tool in our socialization. It's an emotional device that helps us adapt to the rules and beliefs of our families and cultures. Social conditioning can shape our morals without us being aware of it. Before we're capable of critical thought, we're taught what is right and what is wrong, who is good and who is bad. We also learn what kind of behavior is acceptable for men and women and what to value in relationships. A lot of the messages we receive about sex and relationships imprint a strict moral code on us at a young age. When it comes to learned morality, sexual purity in women is a value that appears in many societies and cultures around the world. Messages that a woman who has been with multiple men is somehow spoiled or tainted are pervasive in many cultures. Those repeated messages could have informed the beliefs you have about women that are outside of your awareness. These messages come from our parents, extended family, religious communities, neighbors, and our schooling. They're often repeated in television programs, books, movies, social and popular media. Sometimes they are presented by religious organizations and teachers. So take a moment to reflect on the messages you received about women growing up. Were the women that you admired and taught to respect seen as virginal, loyal, almost prudish, Regardless, whether it's morals, biology, or a little bit of both, understanding disgust in romantic relationships can only help us so much. As I am fond of telling students and coaching clients, there is no intellectual solution for retroactive jealousy. The real answers lie deeper than our intellect. Here are a few things I've learned from the thousands of men I've coached about how to heal from disgust about a girlfriend's past. Step number one, 
Identify whether your disgust has become obsessive. If the disgust you feel about your partner's sexual past is keeping you up at night and making intimacy impossible, you may be struggling with obsessive thought patterns. Scientists have observed links between disgust and OCD. If you're familiar with any of my work on retroactive or obsessive jealousy, you'll know that the same links to OCD show up there. So, how do you know if the disgust you feel has become an obsessive thought pattern? A little bit of jealousy and disgust in a relationship can be considered normal. If you typed my girlfriend's past disgust me into a Google search engine and landed here, likely you're becoming aware of a greater problem. Our actions are telltale signs that an emotion has become an obsession. Do you frequently question your girlfriend about her past? Or look up her exes on social media? Is your disgust keeping you from having better or more frequent sex with your girlfriend? If disgust is getting in the way of your relationship, your mind has attached significant meaning to a story about your girlfriend's past. Our minds get stuck on details that conflict with deep-seated, often unquestioned beliefs we may hold. These beliefs may be conscious or unconscious. You may be attached to a story about your girlfriend's past because it disagrees with the information you were taught as a child about how an ideal woman or a perfect wife should behave. What quote-unquote good girls do and don't do. When something in our reality appears to conflict with our moral code, our brains can spiral out of control. We get stuck on that conflict because we seek harmony between our values and our lived reality. The first step in changing our thought habits is simply to become aware of them. Identify exactly which story from your girlfriend's past is triggering you. Try to get specific about exactly what is bothering you about your girlfriend's past. Next, evaluate whether or not these unwanted thoughts have become obsessive on a scale of 1, not very obsessive, to 10, extremely obsessive. Which brings me to my second piece of advice. Step number two, seek solitude to get in touch with your core values. So much of what we value is passed down from others and doesn't truly belong to us. In his book, The Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz talks about the process of domestication that we all go through in childhood. As we are domesticated, he says, we learn how to live and how to dream. Miguel Ruiz goes on to say that at a certain point in our childhood, the domestication process is so strong that we no longer need people or institutions to domesticate us. Our minds become so well trained that we begin to domesticate ourselves. This process is also called socialization. To get past disgust, we need to align with what truly matters to us, outside of our learned morality. To do this, we need to unlearn the socialized beliefs we have that don't truly serve us. This socio-cultural baggage informs the way we look at just about every aspect of our lives. Now, it's worth acknowledging that you didn't choose to grow up viewing sex and sexuality the way you did. The way a good woman or a decent man was defined for you in childhood might not fit with what you truly believe to be true. The relationships that you saw modeled might not be how you would choose to love someone. Still, your mind will try to convince you it's the only way if you're not careful. In the personal development world, we call these unconscious thoughts limiting beliefs. There are ways we see the world that we have unconsciously accepted as truth. Usually, we are unaware we even have these limiting beliefs. If you're going to overcome romantic disgust, obsessive jealousy, or frankly any of the issues which hold you back, you have to become aware of your beliefs. I recommend sitting down with a piece of paper and writing out, unfiltered, any of the expectations for relationships that were modeled for you as a kid. You can ask yourself, how were you taught men were supposed to act in relationships? How were you taught women were supposed to behave? Are the standards and expectations the same for both sexes? Now don't get down on yourself if some of these feel hypocritical, vain, or even wrong to you. If you find yourself getting critical about what's coming up, 
you've probably stumbled on something significant. Much of what we're told to believe as children goes against our actual core values which we grow into as adults. I recommend spending some time in solitude to get back in touch with what you truly value. Go for a walk, meditate, or write out some ideas by hand on paper. There's a lot of noise in our heads at every given moment. Very little of what plays on the radio of our mind actually belongs to our voice. The more you can tune into your values, the more you can drown out everybody else's. One final note about morals, values, and social conditioning. It can be easy to blame people for planting unhelpful thoughts in our heads. Remember that those who domesticated you were just repeating the same stories they were told growing up. Socialization is ultimately nobody's fault. It is our responsibility to unlearn what doesn't serve us and live according to our true values. Now, if you arrive at the conclusion that you actually believe deep in your soul, in your socio-cultural conditioning, then fine. You should make decisions based on your fully acknowledged, fully owned core beliefs. But if you're conflicted about your socio-cultural conditioning, take the time to really tease it out. Take the time to consider different perspectives, seek out a variety of teachers, and read widely. Only then can you truly decide for yourself on your vision of the world. But for the purposes of this article, let's assume you're open to the idea that much of your socio-cultural conditioning isn't serving you. Which brings us to step number three. Experiment with replacing the discussed thought with its opposite. Considering alternative thoughts is an enormously powerful exercise to overcome obsessive thinking. It's a quick and easy way we can trick our brains into moving from a negative thought pattern to a positive one. To use this tool to help you overcome disgust, start by getting clear about exactly what's triggering this emotion. You can refer back to step one if necessary. Once you're clear, write the trigger down as a statement. For the purpose of this article, I'll use a common trigger as an example. My girlfriend's past disgusts me because her history of casual sex makes me think she's bad or dirty. Next, experiment with writing down a potentially viable alternative to this statement. A few we could try using the example that I just mentioned are My girlfriend's past excites me. I value her independence and her experience. I know that she doesn't settle and that she chose me because she loves me and she finds me sexually attractive. Or My girlfriend's past helps me to feel closer to her. I know that she trusts me and wants me to know all of her. I know she doesn't judge me for my past, and I don't judge her for hers. Or, my girlfriend is an attractive, intelligent, sexy woman. She has lots of options on the dating market, and right now, she's convinced that I'm the man for her. Lucky me. Now, these statements might be tough to write at first. I get it. They might feel so entirely not true that you want to give up on this exercise altogether. But stay with me here. When you've come up with a few alternative statements, pick the statement that resonates with you the most. The one that provides the most clarity or reassurance. Look at it often and turn to it whenever feelings of disgust show up. It doesn't have to feel true right away. If there are several statements which make you feel better, Keep them in a list on your phone so you can refer to and reflect on them anytime. Now, this type of work takes practice, so commit to making opposite thoughts part of your daily routine. Because let me tell you, if you stay with it, your relationship can transform. Step number four give your relationship a sexual reset. At the beginning of this article, I talked about how disgust and sex can often go hand in hand. Just about every man who says my girlfriend's past disgusts me has a sex life that's suffering. Even if you're having sex regularly, you may be holding back if your mind is focusing on your girlfriend's past instead of the present. So what's a sexual reset? Honestly, it's just about anything you both need it to be. It could be something you do together or something you commit to on your own. It's an act of leaving disgust behind and reigniting the flame that drew you together in the first place. When your mind gets in the way of intimacy, it's important to be intentional 
about recreating desire in your relationship. Therapist and author Esther Perel often talks about how distance can create desire. If you're able to get away, I highly recommend going on a solo trip somewhere as part of this reset. In your time away, commit to changing the thought patterns that have caused the repeat pattern of disgust. Spend some time in the exercises I talked about earlier in this video. This solitude will help you get the clarity you need, and the separation from your girlfriend will build lust and longing between you. And when you get back, embrace your girlfriend and approach intimacy with a fresh slate. Be present and generous with her, and let her be generous with you too. If your mind slips to the past, choose to focus on the opposite thought statement you created instead, or give your mind a focal point in the room to distract you from negative thoughts. I have one client who thinks about trees and clouds as soon as negative thoughts enter his mind. See if this kind of thing could work for you too. If a mini vacation isn't available to you right now, the other key player in driving desire is novelty. So get creative. Mix up the sex you're having in some way, whether that involves incorporating new toys, new positions, new moods, or role play, whatever. Meet up at a bar and flirt unabashedly with your girlfriend seducing her as if you've never met. Get out of town, park by a lake, and get up to some fun. Read a new book or take a new online course, exploring a new aspect of sex and sexuality which is interesting to you. Now these are just suggestions, and the possibilities are endless. If you're comfortable bringing your girlfriend on board, I'm sure she'll have some great ideas too. So enjoy the process. Step number five. Instead of telling yourself, my girlfriend's past disgusts me, remind yourself about what you love about your partner. Every man I've spoken to about disgust expresses their frustration with the emotion. They feel like they're unfairly judging their girlfriends, and they don't know how to turn that judgment of my girlfriend's past disgusts me. These men find the women they're with to be sexy, fun, and trustworthy. They're in relationships they want to hold on to, and they feel like disgust is holding them back. These men are also aware that they need to work on this problem or they'll lose their girlfriend. Disgust, jealousy, fear, shame, and insecurity are all emotions that hold us back in relationships. They waste our time, hurt our partners, and make us feel like men we don't want to be. As you do any type of healing work from negative emotions, it's important to remember what and who is motivating you. Recalling what you love about your partner is a great way to remind ourselves why we want to make big changes to the way we think. Focusing on what you love about your partner is also a powerful way to get out of negative thought patterns and into positive ones. Dedicate time every day to remind yourself of what you love about your girlfriend, what you admire about her, and what you find attractive. Shifting our mindset takes time, but it's always worth the investment. If you're doing the hard work of healing, you need to know that you never have to do it alone. You can join thousands of others in my online course, jump on a call with me and talk things through one-on-one, -on -one, or grab my guidebook and dive further into strategies which will complement the ones that I shared in this article. I've helped thousands of people overcome obsessive jealousy and disgust, and it would be an honor to be part of your healing journey too. Click a link in the description to learn more about overcoming retroactive jealousy and regaining clarity and peace of mind about your girlfriend's past.